Welcome to the spotlight. Well, today we are not in our studios, but instead we are at uh, around Maria Makunda in a very, very lovely place. And our guest tonight is none other than Sena Bombay. She's very well known. She's an established businesswoman. And we're going to be talking about, you know, things surrounding her business, her life, and how far she has gone into the uh, entrepreneurship um, skill in the Gambia. Welcome, Sena Bo. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm good. You look good. Thank you. And I'm sure you're wearing one of your designs as of well. Of course, I always wear Always rocking them. <laughs> Thank you for having us. You know, to, to, so today we're going to be talking about you, you know, your business and everything that surrounds it. Right. First of all, tell me, how has it been since you ventured into entrepreneurship in the Gambia? Well, um, okay. <laughs> First of all, I am going to thank God for making everything, I'm not going to say um, easy, but possible. You know, whatever you're doing in life, um, there's, there are ups and downs of it. And for me, the ups, I'm grateful. The downs, I see them as um, um, experience that I learn from. Yeah, but apart from that, it has been good, you know, just like any <coughs> other business, mm -hmm. you have to work hard and working hard is difficult, you know, so you have to work hard to get wherever you want to get because I am still working hard. Mm -hmm. Maybe a lot of people will say, oh, see, he's successful, see that, but I don't see myself where I want to be. Wow. You know, if it is 100, I think I am at 20. Wow. Yes. Okay. So. She's very optimistic. I see very, that. very. Because yeah. what I have in my head, if I have to put it out there, do hit be a Do hit Yes. So when you started a business, was what did you venture in, and when did you start business, doing business? Well, man. Okay. Since um, growing up, mm -hmm. I was born into a family. <coughs> of business. I was born and my dad was a businessman okay. and my mom was also a businesswoman. Okay. You know, they both have stores in the market. My dad was into cosmetics yeah. and my mom was into baby oh. stuff. Okay. She loves selling baby stuff like baby cosmetic, baby clothes and all that. Okay. So I used to go there to help. I would go to my dad's shop and also to my mom's shop. Yeah. I'm just in between you know mm -hmm. so i got used to, to to that you know going to school also i had a dream of um being an entrepreneur mm -hmm. like i can remember when i was in school when my friends were like oh i want to be a banker i want to be a doctor i want to be this mm -hmm. i'm like eh, i'm not gonna work for anybody <laughs> i'm gonna have my own business mm -hmm. you know and I'm, I always dream of having a complex where it's going to be a one-stop, where you're going to come in, you're going to have your hair done, mm -hmm. your makeup done, your clothes done, you know. It's always something that I am dreaming, that I dreamt of, and I'm 100% sure I am on the right track. Yes, I'm not saying I'm there yet, but I am on the right track. And what, what did you start with? Slowly you but slowly. So I started as a makeup artist. Mm. Okay, so going back to school, when I graduated from school, mm -hmm. mom and I graduated from high school, I, I got married. 
So when I got married, I was actually also not just sitting home. I said, look, I have to do something. Okay. I have to learn a skill. And you know, since I was fashion oriented, even going to school, I participate in beauty pageants and you know, doing modeling here and there. Mm -hmm. Not too serious because they said I was short. <laughs> but that didn't stop me. Yes. I said, you know what? I was mm -hmm. gonna do what I like doing. You know, I do, I have my own, I have a whole industry surrounded by, I, have, I was living in my own world, you know. Wow. I'm like, you know what? If you cannot be it, you can create it. Mm -hmm. Why not? So I, I, was, I was like that, you know, growing up. I love dressing up. People that know me from school days, I was always in a haze for weekends to come because I have to go for studies. Okay. That's the only time we have to come in Mufti. Uh -huh. So this is where I showcase my talent <laughs> in dressing. And you know that sometimes no. when I go to school, uh -huh. I guess my friends, you might want secretary because I dress <laughs> like the secretary. <laughs> you know, I can funny. remember all these things, mm -hmm. but it was fun, you know. Yeah, so. After I got married and I'm like, I'm not going to sit like that. I started, you know, learning makeup. Mm -hmm. I was self-taught. Oh. I learned here and there. And then I started doing it on people. People liked it. And they would come and patronize me. Yeah. From there, I started saving, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I, I love makeup and all that. But also, I had in, interest in the fashion industry because to me, beauty covers a lot, mm -hmm. like, beauty is huge the beauty industry is huge mm -hmm. and i wanted to be everywhere mm -hmm. because that's how you conquer yeah. being everywhere as well we've seen you involved in skincare products as well yes tell us about that i'm you gonna come to that okay this part is actually interesting that's why i want to take my no time problem. to say take it take your time yes uh -huh. so um i um how to call it where was i you were talking about how you ventured into the right. business here? Sometimes. Yes, exactly. So I'm like, I have to, yes, I saved. And since I had interest in fashion designing also, mm -hmm. I was good. Because even growing up, I have friends that will come. See, I'm here with you. I'm you. I'm here Okay, definitely, definitely, you know. There are even tailors around my area I used to go to. I just imagine something and we'll sketch it to life and it, it becomes amazing. Wow. Me growing up, you look at my... Um, my old and old and pictures you see some crazy design that people were not bold enough to, to wear. wear but these were things that were in my head that I just give to tailors and then they do whatever so yeah and I was like okay I'm gonna do that too so I, I decided to buy a machine mm -hmm. at home I actually started at home wow. so when I was at home I was doing the makeup people come for makeup and then the tailor was also there I would do the design he would do the tail showing here and there until I decided to open a store just next to, my, not far from where I was staying because I was married and sometimes it's not easy to, you know, balance business yeah. and marriage, depends on the kind of family you're married mm -hmm. to. So I had to get somewhere close by so that it will not affect, like I don't want the two to, you it's know, collide, like, yeah. you know what yeah. So that's why I was trying to, you know, balance things. That's why I got a store around there. Mm -hmm. And that's where I started. That was in 2018, yes. So I was there, here and there, until today, voila. And I'm still on it. That's really great, talking yes. about the skincare. You said you wanted to be everywhere, and definitely you are everywhere when it comes to the fashion industry, cosmetics, skincare. And talking about skincare, we've seen so many reviews of your skincare products, of how good and how it has been helpful to many young girls out there. Yes. Tell us how you started it and if you produce them yourself so the skincare also has its own story because growing up i was very cautious with my skin because i know uh, my beauty lies on my skin that's something that i was so proud of and i was careful i don't just want to put anything on my skin so what i normally used to do is when i go to the market to buy any skincare product i try to engage the person selling it, I ask, what is this made of? But I don't get um, positive response. Some of them tend to get angry. I'm like, this is supposed to be your job. Why are you agitated? Because I ask a question, and this is a genuine question. I think everybody has the right to know what is going on their skin. 
but I, I see, so I was skeptic about the cosmetics in the country. So this is when I started doing my own research and um, I started um, actually formulating my own um, skincare. Um, with, um, I started using um, uh, body butters, you know, I, I, I formulate and I pro-mix sometimes. So a cosmetics uh, production is huge. You have some people that formulate, you have some people that pro-mix, you understand? So the people that formulate are those ones that formulate it from scratch. You use your e-wax, oils, and combine it with, you know, liquid to produce a lotion or whatsoever. And you have other people that are pro-mixers. Mm -hmm. Pro-mixers normally, um, they, they also have knowledge like the formulators, but those are the ones that's, that, that are like, you know what, I don't want to go through I don't want to. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to go through um, um, formulating a product from the scratch. Mm -hmm. I just want to get a base and do my pro mixing. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. So when you are formulating, you formulate from scratch. Bring different. Um, bring different oils mm -hmm. and liquids to form a lotion. Okay. You understand? Yeah. And the oil also. You bring different oils together mm -hmm. to create oils or balms or whatever you want to create. Mm -hmm. Those are formulators, they start from scratch. Now the pro mixers, somebody can formulate a base. A base lotion is something that is a lotion that is created with no ceramides, mm -hmm. no, um, no um, lightening agents or any other additives. It's just basic mm -hmm. with nothing. Yeah. So pro mixers will take that and then add their own um, serums, ceramides, um, lightening products, whatever they want to do with it, mm -hmm. and then promix it to another thing. Okay. You understand? Yeah. So I do both. I promix and I um, formulate. Okay. Depends on the kind of product it is. Yeah, if I want to product, especially like lightening um, uh, lotions, mm -hmm. sometimes I just order the base, the base lotion. Mm -hmm. When the base lotion comes, I do my promixing. I just bring in together different serums and different stuff nice. that will, you know, add the, um, um, adjust the quality or regulate whatsoever because some of the, the lotions are acidic and all that so you have to put in some oils to, form, um, to regulate and do whatever so that it can match the pH of the human skin. Some people have issues with cosmetics uh, because they use um, um, cosmetics that are wrong for their skin types mm -hmm. you understand because the skin itself have a ph mm -hmm. so if it is not balanced this is when you see reactions especially around the face okay. area talking about that so if i was to walk in here today and ask okay i want a lotion for my skin are you just going to sell me one or you're going to recommend one that goes with my skin of course yeah and one might ask also is it safe the the products that you produce are they safe for the skin are they safe for mm. the skin? Mm. Well, <laughs> to ask for my customers, I've, ha I've heard customers that have been with me since 2018. Mm -hmm. They've been using the same product and they have no issue at all. Okay. The issue is um, when it comes to cosmetic, whenever you're using them, you have to be very cautious. Don't abuse it, mm -hmm. especially when you're dealing with lightening agent. Mm -hmm. I know when you said, is it safe? Is it it's because you're concerned mm. of the lightening. We don't only do lightening. Okay. We even do baby products. Okay. Maybe it's just the wh whitening is more hype mm. because the demand for that is more. Mm. People, literally almost everybody wants to be light skin. Mm. You understand? Yeah. So people come for the lightening products um, all the time. And that's why, and you normally see some people that lighten and the results they get at the end of the day, how they end up. What are they doing? Well, I'm the muje if you're doing it the right way. Okay. For me, the reason why I got into skincare, like I said, I had skin concerns. Mm -hmm. I wanted my skin to be a bit lighter, not too white. I just wanted this golden undertone okay. on my skin because there are a lot of people that are battling with skin uh, problems more are the light skin. People that are naturally light skin. Light skin. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to control their skin. Okay. 
you understand because some of them they're like mm -hmm. you understand mm -hmm. so they want something that will maintain their skin i went through that mm -hmm. you know you apply some products and they will be darkening your skin instead of giving you that you, you want mm -hmm. even if you're not lighter let it maintain you but most of the time it will you know darken mm -hmm. but sometimes I I, I uh, as time went on I got to realize sometimes it's not even the product that's the problem it's how we use it mm -hmm. uh, because of the sunlight here there are certain products you use you don't go under the Sun mm -hmm. if you use it and go under the Sun it darkens your skin so I real, I'm, I, that's why I was like, look, I want to be a problem solver. And I've, since growing up, I've heard people say, because even my dad, if you buy a cream, he wants to read it. He wants to know the ingredients that are in the, in the, in the, in the, in the product. So if anything's clear or anything lightening, he sees there's like, they're local. Because he was also into cosmetics. He, he knew like good brands da da, da 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 so growing that was not also a huge huge problem for me you understand he didn't like okay when i was growing up he eventually it later you understand but i got to learn a lot of things also from him you understand so um um like i was saying so growing up i've heard people advocating for you know stop bleaching bleaching is bad da 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 da, da. Yeah. up to day when you look at the percentage of women bleaching, it's gotten higher and higher. And I was like, before stopping, trying to stop people, that would never stop, by the way. They will not. They will not. Sometimes I have cases that you have some women that literally they are damaged. I tell them, stop. Let's repair skin first. And then now we can look into lighten. They say, no, I want to be light. I have a problem. I da -da 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 -da. You understand? Yeah. That's what makes them comfortable. So you can imagine. It's like a drug or something. I don't, I don't get it. So you understand? So I was like, I have to, I have to solve this problem mm -hmm. by telling people how to use it properly. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people abuse it. Mm -hmm. Most of our customers, when they come, what I tell them is you have to follow the instruction properly. If you don't, whatever happens to you, you are on your own <laughs> because I know if you abuse it, mm -hmm. if you abuse it, 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 forget about whatsoever brand, even international brands. They can help. No, it's not about it cannot help. If you abuse them, that's okay. what I mean. If you abuse it, mm -hmm. it gives you reactions. Everything have dosage. Lotions are like the, 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 the medications we take. Mm -hmm. It goes directly to your bloodstream. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. Like this hydroquinone, everybody is hyping. Oh, hydroquinone, this cream has the hydroquinone. Hydroquinone is not bad. Mm -hmm. But if you abuse it, it damages your skin. Okay. When you go to the hospital, when you go to dermatologists, big hospitals, when you have problems, like when you have burning issues, when you have um, discoloration or dark spot, or they use hydroquinone to clear that out. Doctors literally recommend hydroquinone for you mm -hmm. to clear hyperpigmentations and, you know, dark areas or whatsoever that you're battling with, which is not even bleaching, maybe sunburn or whatsoever, but there's a way to use it. Mm -hmm. You don't abuse it. So you don't need more than 2% of hydroquinone on your skin for the whole year. You know, I like the fact that you've made so, many, so much research, you know so very well about what you're doing. Yeah. And I like that fact. Because yeah. not everyone, so many people are venturing into the, into the skincare products. They don't even know the amount of whatever they're mixing. I Is know. it good for the skin or not? But I, I like the fact I that know. you've gone to research about these things that you're using. So it, you, you'll be fair to your customers as well. Yes. I, there are some people that are even using some products that maybe, you know, do we massage or do we buy it? You understand? Yeah. I can guarantee you, buy it, you bring it, there are some oils that I'll put in it, it will regulate it. All the acidity in it will drop. You'll be able to use it and it will not even damage your skin. Okay. But most of these lotions in the market, mm -hmm. they are good. They were formulated with a good base. But what happens is since people demand for um, um, rapid whitening, mm -hmm. that's why they will put a lot of acids and chemicals in it so that you use cotera within three days you're white wow. and that is very dangerous 
Because some people, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, mm -hmm. the more people demand for things, the, because we have that. One week, the more people has one week. I tell you, if you use a product that has within one week, sanica. Because because you're giving the skin more than it can take. Mm -hmm. That's why you're having that fast reaction okay. at the end of the day. So I keep telling them, the family, you have to give them milk mm -hmm. and then porridge. But then you have a newborn baby today, you want to give her, him or her rice? It's not possible. Thank you. Yeah. The skin also is the same thing. And you can achieve lightening, natural lightening, safe lightening, but there's a gradual process hmm. that you have to follow yeah. so yeah come to you cannot lighten your skin yeah. so have you gotten like a bad review from someone maybe coming on social media and said okay i've used sex products and this is what my skin is doing and if you had what did you do at that point? i never had okay i've never had maybe if i do also because we got a lot of comments or I've never come across it, mm -hmm. but we have had people that come and say, you know, this product is not working for me. But guess what? The complaint is, nobody has, but not the fire has my Okay, it's because they're not patient. Mm -hmm. I keep telling them, if you're in a haze, mm -hmm. you're not gonna get the results you want. You have to be patient mm -hmm. and follow procedures the way we told tell you to do it. But if you saw so Yakamte, you will not see results. Okay. Because when you want it to come, it will not come at that time. Mm. But the moment you start using our products, you feel you're using something good. Because man, what I focus on is repair. Because I'm trying to solve problem. Mm. And what I focus most on is repair. Okay. What, our cosm uh, what our products do is, when you start using them, mm -hmm. in the first stage, it repairs your skin. Okay. After you repair in your skin, then it will start, if it is for lightening, it will start lightening gradually. Mm. It does not just come boom, mm -hmm. now. This is why if you're using our products, even if you stop it, mm. maybe you might be a little bit dim, dim, but you don't, even if you're light skin, even because there was a time I was in prison, mm. there, they don't allow you to lose lightening products. I was not having access to my, uh, products. Okay. Maybe the only thing you use is um, petroleum jelly, which is we locally call Vaseline mm. or shea butter, karate. Mm. That's what they're allowed inside, or maybe cocoa butter. This kid's cocoa butter. Mm -hmm. That's maybe, it depends okay. on the brand. So that's the only thing they're allowed there. So it wonders a lot of people how come she's not that? Okay. Yeah, it's because I was using good products on my skin mm. our products are like that even if you use it if it doesn't work for your skin it will not damage because what might work for you might not work for me mm -hmm. and in the cosmetic industry 60 or 70 percent of a good of good reviews of a product is a good product yeah. you don't need 100 percent good reviews okay. for your product to be recognized as a good mm. product a lot of people don't know this but i did my research nationally and internationally <laughs> so right. i because i am looking to compete the outside world yeah, I so i look at that. the standards there and what you know what they talk about reviews and quality and whatsoever so i get to learn 60 to 70 percent of good reviews it's good okay. that shows your product is good because it's like food you have some people that are allergic to streams yeah. some people are not mm -hmm. so just because you're allergic to streams doesn't mean the streams is bad so the product is also like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there are some um, products, there are some additives that are in there. Maybe they are plant-based or they are vegetable. Oh, they're, 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 um, um, how, to, how will I even call it? They're from animal fats. Mm -hmm. So if you're allergic to one of those things, maybe you might be allergic to the, to the lotion. Okay. So that's why sometimes it's good also to know what you're allergic to. Yeah. When, you're coming, when you're purchasing any skincare, mm -hmm. Try to ask what is in there. I can willingly tell people what I use in my, um, 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 how to call it, uh, during my formulations or pro mix mm -hmm. because I know. So if you know what is in there, if you are allergic to any of it, mm -hmm. stay away from it. Okay. Because if you use any product that you are allergic to, instead of getting a, a result, you got a problem instead. So that's what happens to a lot of people. So a lot of people go and buy cosmetics from the wrong people because they cannot even tell you What's how to properly there? use it. Okay. Some people order cosmetics and come and give it to people 
just the user like that and every cosmetic you purchase there's a direction there mm -hmm. you you have to understand the directions and when people come and purchase it you have to tell them how to use it okay. properly yeah. yes most definitely i'm learning i'm learning a lot I from know. you <laughs> so let's talk about you said you want to you know international standard as well yes and you've ventured <coughs> into fashion designing yeah. i've seen so many of your videos you uploaded lately on tiktok right. and you have so many comments others nice others were not nice at all yeah. so first talk to me why did you venture into fashion designing in the first place? You told me growing up you liked, you liked it a lot, but the kind of brand that you're bringing up, why did you venture into that? Again, it's because something, it's something that I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're venturing into a business, the best thing you do is do something that you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. Then work will not be only work for you, it will be fun mm -hmm. instead. Mm -hmm. To me, work is fun. And growing up, I wanted to, I wanted to be, because I'm a very happy person. I like to be happy. I like to do things that makes me happy. Because if I'm around things that makes me sad, I am down. And then I cannot show my potentials. So I was like, do you know what? I have to be in the fashion industry. I don't just want to chapati. Mm -hmm. I want to be in mm -hmm. fashion, cosmetics, beauty, everything. I want everything because all these things make me happy. Growing up, makeup, dressing up makes me happy. It boosts my confidence. People know. Because mm -hmm. it makes me happy. Yeah. You know? So I was like, why not? It's a win win for me. Mm -hmm. It's making me happy. I'm good at it. And I'm making money out of right. it. So why yeah. not? Yeah. So why not? So yeah. So. That's the reason why I got into it, because I know I am passionate about it and I can do it so well. I don't want to get into something that at the end of the day, I do it, they're like, why are you even doing this? I don't want to be like that. I want to do what I'm doing, I do it all out. I want when people see it, they appreciate it. And I think that's happening, yeah. right? So how you started, when you introduced the Saks brand on TikTok, a little Okay. Especially that jacket that you wore and the trouser. Others were like, nah, this is too much. But I can remember my sister Emily, she commented, she was like, this is classy, this is sassy. And when you wear it in the fashion week in Europe, like you stand up. Thank you. And so this shows you what I'm saying, that I do my research well. Mm -hmm. And it's not national level. Because to me, in the country here, oh, I don't see competition. I want Gambia to be noticed, you know. I want big designers, you know, from Valenciaga, mm. from, you know, Fendi, to, big. to see okay. something, I'm like, what is this? Mm. Where is this from? Poop, Gambia, this, they come into the country and search, like, what is happening in this country? Because yeah. there's talent in this country. Yeah. So sustainable fashion is one thing you do to attract people. Because I, I, I feel, um, you can do a whole lot of things uh, with things people think that is a waste or whatsoever. Mm. Looking at these chairs was made by us. These nice. are pieces of jeans mm -hmm. uh, um, stitched together, patched together actually, mm -hmm. and we created this. So that is another type of fashion that is different and it stands out because when you look at big stars, that's how they dress. They want something that is not normal. Mm -hmm. Because no, to me, normal is boring. Yeah, why be normal when you can be extra? When you can be extra mm -hmm. and get the attention, like the whole attention and mm. cause traffic jam, noise, <laughs> wherever you go. Yeah. That's how, uh, yeah, I'm always intentional. Mm -hmm. I'm a very intentional person. Yeah, but when I dress up, I am intentional. Mm -hmm. Whatever you see on me, it was done intentionally, okay. premeditated, okay. intentionally. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because I want the attention to be on me or anybody I styled. Okay. So that's why that also come along. I do a whole lot of things, not only that, but I can realize it made more noise. Yeah, it because even before nice. that, yeah. I was doing all the designs, but that stood out because yeah. it's not every day something you see around. Most Somewhere definitely. like, but I, I get it, they will get it, because this is what we need. We need fashion designers mm -hmm. to create these things to make our people get 
familiarize with it yeah. to get used to these things. Yeah, more reason the noise was too much because people were not familiar with sustainable fashion, especially exactly. your independence outfit. Right. A lot of people were making so much noise about it. Mm -hmm. But when you take a look at the Gambia and those that are involved in fashion, these are not things that people usually see. So do you have it in mind to create something that they can familiarize themselves with and say, okay, sax wore this and it's nice. I think I, I need to get myself That's something That's what like I am that. doing. This is why I, try, I, 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 I dressed out artists. Mm -hmm. I did, um, I styled Miss Jobis. Yeah, on her nice because I was like this style I want to introduce to the country yeah. who are the best people to influence it the, the artists the celebrities the artists yeah. the celebrities so I wear it I influence a lot of people mm -hmm. I wear it I made some artists wear it Miss Jobis is big Jizzle is big so I made them wear it you, you designed Jizzle's outfit as well yes and it's me versus me concept yes I, wow. I did. You can go on YouTube to check the video is there, the vlog I video. Seen it yet. I yeah, we have it. a YouTube channel where I post some of these things. Mm -hmm. Some part of it, this will also be there because I have a crew. <laughs> okay. Yes, I'm also working because, like I said, I'm I'm all about art. Now, when you look at the name Sax, mm. I can see you didn't ask me, but I will tell you. <laughs> okay. So when you look at the name Sax. Uh -huh. This was something I created since when I was going to school. I'm yeah. like, you know what, one day when I grow up, I'm going to have my own empire. That's yeah. how I used to say it. Yeah. I said, I'll have Saks Empire. Yeah. I was a very young, ambitious young person yeah. growing up, you know. I can remember when, when we used to walk on the street and my friends, when they see someone, like a girl, driving a very nice car, it's like, oh, when will I have this? I'm like, mm -hmm. our time will come, don't worry. <laughs> That's how I always used to do it. Yeah. So, uh, um, Sax, it's an abbreviation of Sainable's arts and creative styles mm. because I'm all about arts, mm -hmm. I'm all about creativity, mm. you know, I'm all about style, yeah. you know, so I'm, that's why I'm into styling, I'm into creativity, I'm into, you know, arts. So that's why now I'm like, okay, the industry is wide and there are a lot of things I think needs to be done a lot. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things that needs boosting and all that. So I'm going to do a little bit of both, a little bit of everything, so that at least, even if I cannot do it all, but this will shake other people in the industry mm -hmm. and boost them. They're like, you know what? We've been doing it wrong. We have to buckle up. We have to, you know, update ourselves. Yeah. So I'm also into the videography industry okay. so i'm working on a studio you guys watch out i'm launching my studio soon okay so we'll be you know i i just want gambia to be noticed yeah this this is this is all and i and i know there's talent in the country mm -hmm. and we just need to pave the way pave the way by also thinking out of the box let us not just be limited to what we know and we mm -hmm. think that's that's all. Mm -hmm. Let us try to emulate the outside world yes, so that we can also get to where other countries are getting. Yeah. I, that, I, that is our problem in yeah. Gambia. I think we tend to limit ourselves onto we, what we do yes. and we shouldn't. And now when they see anybody coming out different, it's a problem. If you're not strong, mm -hmm. Gambians are corny. If you're not strong, they drain the drain back. Mm -hmm. But you have to be strong, wear a thick skin, and make it happen. Yes, it's like that. At first, they will laugh at you. Then they will laugh with you. Then they will follow. That's it. Talking about launching, I heard something like you launching an app. Yeah, I like to. Before that, let's talk about, we were talking about uh, fashion designing. Would you, in the future, like organize a runway where you will showcase what you've designed and what you want to bring into the you know, fashion industry? Is On that the plan? Is that on the plan, I'm not surprised to hear. <laughs> what are we gonna expect? What are we expecting from that? Difference. Difference. What's gonna make the difference? I I just I just sold a tip of the iceberg. Mm. And it was making a lot of noise. Yeah, especially. Imagine if the whole package comes in. Wow, I can't wait for that. Honestly, yes. I can't wait to see. I what like you have. to give clues. I don't want to let the card out of the bag. Okay, so yes. the outfit you wore when you were opening this place, what inspired that? Which one? Both of them? Or the, the red the and black one with the oh. touch of green? The one right. You, yeah. Okay, that um, outfit was um, inspired by my story. Um, um, that outfit was, was talking about freedom. 
Wow. When you look at the wings, it was, it was this, it was just telling this woman is free. You understand? It was talking about um, boldness. It was defining me in general. Freedom. I am. From I'm a free person. I'm a free-minded, exactly? free-minded person from my society. Mm -hmm. I don't let my society def uh, define me. You understand? Mm -hmm. I fight whatever comes my way. I don't let anything stop me because if I listen to society, I would not be where I am today. You understand? A lot of things happened in my life. I, I was fighting and fighting and fighting until I got where I got. You understand? Mm -hmm. So when you look at the colors, we intentionally choose, you, you could see some blue, red, and green beads. Mm -hmm. And my hair also was intentional because I didn't have white hair. So I decided to do that gray hair, but it was white in my head. Mm -hmm. So that's the Gambian flag because mm -hmm. most of the things I am doing, it's for Gambia. Okay. You understand? So that was the red, white, blue, white, green. It's the, it's the, it's the, um, the Gambian flag because it's me out there representing Gambia, mm. you understand, giving my heart to Gambia, because mm. I want to see Gambia somewhere. Yeah, you talked about being free and not allowing the society determine who you are yes. and fighting. There's no more news of what happened to you previously. Everyone yes. knows what happened to Zainab Mumbai. Right. But people will wonder, how did she get out from this? She could have been left broken. Yes. She could have been dealing with mental issues. She yes. could have been dealing with her mental you know stability yes. but you you came out strong and it left a lot of people in, you know, in, in, a, in a dilemma who is this woman and how did she manage to pull out of this tell us well when you listen to since I started talking I was saying when I was younger mm -hmm. when at a very young age I discovered who I am who I was you know I started advocacy very young, even going to primary school, I used to advocate for this um, um, FGM, hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Very young, I can remember my teacher used to tell my dad, you know what, you have, by then it was Yai Jamez era. Mm. You know, people were scared of seeing a young person bold and I am someone, I say my mind, you know. So my teacher used to call my dad, like, you know what, you have to regulate this girl because or else kid could have found it. <laughs> yeah, he loved me. That mm -hmm. Mr. Kole, he, he passed away now. Mm -hmm. But he used to be so worried about me. Mm -hmm. Like, me need more job. He was like, I don't want this girl. Like, you know, by then, yeah, yeah, man, anybody talk few. <laughs> you know? <laughs> know? So he was worried mm -hmm. because I said, I want to study um, uh, law and journalism at the same time. Oh. So he used to laugh. It's like, how is that possible? I said, I can do it. I think I can do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to be a businesswoman and then I want to study law and journalism. And so he would look at me and was like, I said, how can you do all those things? But in my head, mm -hmm. I knew I could achieve it because I am like that. I was a go-getter. If I, even growing up, if I don't want to pass an exam, I would say, I'm not going to pass this exam. I will not. Mm -hmm. If I want to pass, I said, I'm going to pass. And I'm not even going to study, and I will pass. Okay. I was that kind of a person. Mm -hmm. If I put my mind to it and I go, I achieve whatever I want to achieve. So I said I was going to do that. Until marriage happens, I couldn't do that, but I had other dreams too. Okay. I'm like, okay, if it is not this, I will do that okay. other thing. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So growing up, I was very strong. And when I was growing up also, I go through a lot of bullies. You understand? Mm. Bully not because I was um, weak or whatsoever, but I intimidate a lot of people. Oh. One, I was bold. Two, I was, you know, I, I love to dress. When you have that aura, mm. you intimidate a lot of people. Yeah, I so I used to have a lot of friends try to bully me, though I, it doesn't get to me, but I also fight back. Mm. So fighting back, growing up, this, you know, just did a lot of things to me that I didn't even realize until I faced the biggest challenge of my life. That is when I realized how strong I was. Yeah. You know, that's because a lot of things happened. I went through a lot of things. I went through a lot of abuse. I went through domestic violence. I went through a whole lot. You understand? So these, all of these things prepared me to become this strong person. So I felt that when I was in prison, mm. I used to think and and just laugh to myself. Like, you know what? 
no yellow didn't it like he was literally preparing me for this mm. this is why i went through everything i went through and i came out of it you know so i can say um going into prison was the most peaceful time of my life really yes it was yes this was the time I had to sit and rediscover who really I am. This is when I decide to put value on myself because I am not, I am not anybody. I am not anybody. I'm like, no, like you are something else. People didn't know when I used to go out and go for court, I literally smile because when I'm going, I imagine, I, I'm imagining the day I am free, all the things that I am planning while I'm in prison. I was, while I'm going to court, I think about today. Wow. This is what I was thinking about, like me just doing what I love doing, because I knew I was gonna come out of that, because at a young age, I knew I had a purpose. There was a reason why God created me. I had leadership skills. I had a dream that people will follow my lead. I have to inspire a lot of people. There are a lot of people that are in troubles. My story is going to change their life. So how come, how come and why will I be an obstacle for good? No, this was just part of the journey. So I was just looking at it as, I'm going to get to ferry, what a cross border. Mm -hmm. Ferry, you know, you know you're going to get there, but... Mm -hmm. So I was, yeah, because I'm, I'm like, um, I'm going to get there. This is just part of the road. Mm -hmm. I am going to get there. So to people, why is he laughing? Da, da, da. I am not laughing. I was smiling at the victory that I was seeing in front of me because I knew to, to go, to, to, to actually go from, um, to actually get to the grace, mm -hmm. you have to pass through the hardest test. I'm like, this was it. This is it. And I'm going to get there because I know. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised to hear that because one would believe that, oh, she was, she was in prison. If I'm in prison, I'll be thinking about, will I leave here? I'll be wallowing in, in pain, you know? <laughs> but. No, the way if, you were, you're saying if it, I you, mean, if you had the chance to go to the prison mm. and ask the woman there, they will, they will, like, when they're sad, you know, whenever someone comes, like a new inmate comes mm. in, they come in crying. Obviously. Until I leave the prison, they said, you're the only one that came here. And, and you I'm were smiling, smiling like you come to a five-star hotel. <laughs> the other lady said, I don't know, I thought... I, I asked other people, Ki, is going to have no friend in Indi? They were surprised. You understand? Mm -hmm. They were surprised. But to me, I, I know what I have in my mind. I'm like, okay, here we are. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So I was in there. And then I got used to man. When people used to come to visit me, people cry. Oh. And then I will, I will consult you. I'll talk to you. Instead of them consoling And then they'll be like, look. Man, I, my family, they were all at peace because when they come in, how is them? Like, this fine here. We have a fan. We have a fan at television. <laughs> you know, I try to, okay. you know, take it in a good way yeah. and leave it because I know it's part of the journey. Mm. I'm just going to pass through it and that's it. You know, so yeah. It's like the saying when life throws you a lemon, you make a lemonade out of it. Thank you. And you leave on. Yeah, and I was, I was. I was having fun, shut up. When I used to tell them, look, I'm vacation land, I got it. Because <laughs> if I am out there, I work hard. I didn't used to rest, you understand? People I know used to tell me, you have to rest. You have to relax. Because I used to be scared for myself. Mm -hmm. Because I used to work, like work. I wake up in the middle of the night, researching, doing stuff. Like, cause when I wanted to get into cosmetic, that's why I, I came big in it. Like, me you But that that seems hard. How how do you manage to balance that with marriage and your kids? You have three kids now, three yes. girls, and your marriage, and you you seem like a workaholic. 
How yes. do you seem to balance your, 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 your time as a mother, as a wife, and as a businesswoman? Everything has time. I go to work, work time. When I go home, I'm with my family. Okay. I create time for my husband too, you know. I, whenever uh, I'm supposed to be with my husband, I know I'm supposed to be with my husband. Okay. Whenever work calls, duty calls, I have to be there. And he is also someone very understanding. Mm. And he gets me. He knows the kind of a person I am. Mm. And he's very supportive. He mm. makes sure he's there pushing me too. You know, he's been pushing me uh, since when I was in prison also. He used to come and hold my hand. I'm like, you're going to be okay. Well. You're going to be fine. I know you can do this. I know you're strong. I'm like, oh, of course, why not? This is what we chat about. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we talk about when I get out, what we do, you know, when we, he was there also, he really supported me nice. um, emotionally. He was like, hang in there. I, I know you're strong. I know you can do this. I said, of course, I'm, I'm hanging in, you know? Mm -hmm. So he was there every day for me. Like whenever I wake up in the morning, he's the first person I see. He was every day until the day I got out, wow. you know? So after when I came out, we got married and he kept understanding me. You know, he know what I can do. And he was like, this is your breakthrough. You know, it's mm. now or never, you know? So I'm thankful to him too. He's also part of the things where I am very, very strong, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm able to achieve what I achieve in this short period of time because he, 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 he's, he advises me a lot too, you know? Mm -hmm. he, He's a husband, he's an advisor too, so, yay, I'm lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, you are lucky. So right. before we wrap up, tell the people what you have in store for them. Okay. Like I said to you, mm. everything I wanted, if it is 100, I'm at 20 mm. or 30. So I just want to say, I just want to tell Gambia to watch out. I am coming big. This is nothing. Let them just help and pray for me to be able to achieve everything that I have in my head for Gambia. Because if I do, it will be good for all of us. Trust me. No. Yes, <laughs> we will all be proud. Definitely. Because, right. yes, because I love, I love Gambia. Mm -hmm. When I got out of this problem, a lot of people will be like, no, yo, you have to leave this country. Gambians, I'm like, no, where am I going? Where? I'm a Gambian and I have a dream for Gambia. Until I fulfill it, I'm going nowhere. You know, a lot of people think I travel. I've never traveled before. I've only been to Dubai for two weeks. That's it. That's no. the only country I've been to. I've just been in the Gambia. I'm like, until I establish and do all I want to do, then I will start traveling around to see whatever. Mm -hmm. But for now, I have to be here and do what I have to do before whatsoever. Exactly. And I think I'm in the right. You are definitely. Yeah. Well, viewers, you heard it from her. She did not travel. She made it here. You, as yourself, you can also make it here. And you know, when you establish something that you think can help you and the country as well. Finally, say no, your fans. Oh, yes. To my fans, I say a big thank you to all of you because um, they've been supporting big, you know. Gambians, I'm gonna oil hole, mm. you know. <laughs> Gambians can be black today, tomorrow they are white. <laughs> and I love them for that, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Whatever you give them, they take. And I've been, uh, and, and I'm, and I'm so grateful uh, for the support. And it have been massive, honestly. People come and they patronize. Whenever you post something on social media, they are out there interacting. And these are the things that motivate.